Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas here with Judith Hoover from Pregnancy Choices and Samaritan's Purse. And, uh, okay, we left... I apologize again at a horrible spot to have to break um, as you are there in Liberia and you're meeting with people who have suffered terribly uh, by going through either themselves or family members uh, contracting Ebola. Um, What were some of the positive outcomes then of your being able to open and oversee a brand new healthcare facility there? Well, it's amazing to be able to offer that to the community and work with the community um, in overcoming their fear of having people with Ebola come to their community. Um, so, and to just get to work with the healthcare professionals, the Liberian healthcare professionals that we hire to work in the treatment centers, mm-hmm. um, and just to see their willingness to get involved and to help see their passion for helping their country out. It was amazing, Susie, to see that. Um, And then to be able to, you know, provide not only that care, but to talk about Jesus and Mm -hmm. and his his love and, you know, his what he does for us um, to and provide that spiritual comfort to our patients as well, not just providing medical care, but the, the holistic, the component of um, spiritual as well. So that was, you know, amazing to see. And then I was there as the numbers kept coming down. It, it had a sudden drop in numbers. Um, and till the time I left, after I'd been there for three months, I think we were down to about five new cases of Ebola a week instead of about 350. So wow, that was, I mean, just incredible to see, see that. And I, you know, I felt so much better about leaving with, it would have been so much harder to leave if it would have kept on skyrocketing. But, you know, God was merciful and... And you felt that at that point, then you were released to be able to go home, come home again, right? Because yeah, I mean, I had a job amazing. waiting for me here at Pregnancy Choices <laughs> that they graciously <laughs> held for me for four months. Yes, so. yes, incredible. Mm, yeah. and it's got to speak, as you say, so meaningfully to some to the people there to know how much God loves them that He would call people like you mm-hmm. to go help them in this incredible time of need and that you would obey and that had to speak volumes to them about the massiveness of his love for all of us yes it it the people were blown away you know why would you come to our country when we're you know our own people are are afraid and you're coming to help us you know what is what's making you do this yeah and not only to Liberian nationals, but people everywhere. I got asked so many times, why? Why are you going? What? What's making you go? And, and you say Jesus, Jesus, and that gets their yes. attention. Yes, you know, we have that yeah. obligation to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Well, thank you, and God bless you for obeying that call. And uh, it's not the first time. Um, There was more recently, this spring, a horrible earthquake in Ecuador, and uh, Judith Hoover, who is our guest, (laughs) was on the scene once again. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so April 16th, there was a 7.8 earthquake that hit Ecuador. Um, I you know, believe the death tolls over 650, just thousands and thousands. I believe close to 13,000 people estimated Mm -hmm. injured. Just, you know, incredible... Um, devastation that hit the country. And so Samaritan's Purse, I, I'm now with a two-year contract with them to keep on doing uh, disaster responses since my work in Liberia. And I got a call up shortly after the earthquake, and they're like, would you be willing to deploy to Ecuador? And I, so I said yes. And then about two days later, I was on a plane down to Ecuador we got to deploy our field hospital for the very first time with Samaritan's Purse. Uh, that was a very exciting move for us. We've been doing, or I should say Samaritan's Purse has been doing medical responses for years and years. Um, but we now have our own field hospital with a DC-8 that we can fly practically anywhere in the world and land and have a hospital with an OR, with an ER, with war, you know patients' wards, everything that we can set up in about a day's time. Um, wow. So, <laughs> to, wow. 
whispering that. It's amazing. It is. Now, what comes to mind, though, is this is a different situation than Ebola, but kind of not, because where there you have the risk of contracting the disease. In this case, after an earthquake, there are lots of little little earthquakes that follow it. <laughs> and so are yes. you concerned about where to set up your medical facility? You want to make sure that it doesn't become that you don't all become victims as well right absolutely so we were not allowed to sleep um inside buildings when we were in the area that the earthquake had hit um only tents actually the first people on the ground it was just out under the stars the first night um so and and there were after shocks happening uh we i think 6.8 was like the hardest and and that's big yes yes wow so definitely safety is a priority um for samaritan's purse and for you know to keep their staff safe and they really do a wonderful job with you know going to the hard places to be yet keeping that safety standard there. How did they prepare you for that? I know children in California have where we have fire drills here or tornado drills here. They have earthquake drills there. Mm -hmm. Is that what you went through as well? How did they prepare you to be going into this land that had just experienced this? So when you become a part of the DART team, that's the Disaster Assistance Response Team, they send you through about a week of training um, and talk about all different types of scenarios, everything, you know, because you never know what the next disaster is going to be. So they can't in depth, uh, do in depth training on every kind of disaster, but, you know, give you an overview. And then when you deploy, they send you a whole safety briefing on, you know, what's expected, what to do, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then in this case, when did you know that it was okay to come home again? It's a little bit different than waiting until (laughs) cases dwindle to just a a scarce few, but this is different. So Samaritan's Purse, the field hospital, is actually still there running in Ecuador. Um, We're transferring that over to the Ecuadorian Ministry of Health the beginning of July. Uh, We we're donating the whole hospital system to them because so many of their hospitals were damaged and collapsed in the quake the the hospital in the town where we sat up it it collapsed in the quake so that you know you couldn't be seeing patients there so we're transferring that over um but when i came back i had signed up for about a three-week commitment there and honestly, I was just pretty exhausted. That's when I knew I needed to come home right. and not extend uh, because we're working in, it's oh man, it's right over the equator and it is hot. It is hot, hot, hot. And you're working in tents without mm-hmm. air conditioning. Mm-hmm. Um, we had uh, one little tent that had air conditioning in and we would go in there and it would feel so cold and it was still 90 degrees in there. Wow. So... It, Someone had a watch that had a thermometer on, and they said it was 124 degrees the one day. So, oh my word! So you're working, you're working. You know, I'm working a long shift every day that I'm there, and the heat. So, you know, you have physical limits. Even though I would have loved to stay there longer, either you have your physical limits that you meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about. <laughs> I'm thinking culture shock, <laughs> um, food. It's a different kinds of food that you would be eating. Um, just language kinds of barriers. How do you overcome any of these kinds of things? Right. So, you know, I, I walked in to the compound or the area there where we're setting up the tent hospital. And I have my backpack on my back yet. And it's like, go set up your edge. And then it's go set up the ward. And then became ward charge nurse. And um, it's all of these different things. We don't have IV pumps there. I mean, like, oh, my gosh, I have to figure out how to calculate drip rates again. So are you like like MacGyver (laughs) coming up with ways to do that? (laughs) Well, it's it's pulling out information from years ago, and there's a lot Mm -hmm. of ingenuity that goes into it because, yeah, working in those conditions call for, you know, it's... It's not just you don't have everything that you have at a hospital. I mean, we had a lot of stuff. We were doing complex surgeries, um, but it still takes a lot of flexibility and, yeah, ingenuity. Well, and I'm thinking as far as medical personnel, I mean, I would hope and pray that everyone was able to get out of the hospital that collapsed. Mm-hmm. 
But were people lost? Did they lose patients and medical personnel when that occurred? How would you get everyone to free to safety? That's a really good question. I don't no, if anybody was lost, but I mm-hmm. believe most of the people were able to get to safety oh, in that. Good. So w- we did um, use a lot of national people for translators. You were asking about language barrier because yes. they speak Spanish. Um, there was a few of us that had, you know, limited Spanish that we could communicate with, uh, but we immediately had to start looking for translators. So Samaritan's Purse looked for people who taught English at the local schools to come and work as uh, translators in the hospital for us. Um, And we started pulling in, uh, we asked Ministry of Health to help send in extra nurses and doctors to start working with us, uh, especially thinking of the handoff that's going to be happening and just to support um, the team, the expat team that was there. So... Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. And, We're speaking uh, with Judith Hoover. She's a nurse manager at Pregnancy Choices here locally and also works with Samaritan's Purse around the world recently, um, most recently this past spring in Ecuador. Judith, some people might be listening to you, and this is resonating with them so much. They say, oh, God is calling me to do this. What would you say to that person? Listen to that call. Listen to f- that call and follow it. Don't, don't let things hold you back and keep you back from doing that because there'll always be excuses of why not to do that. Always be excuses. So, you know, follow that call. It's it's the great commission that God gave us. And, you know, Samaritan's Purse, the, the, their motto is helping in Jesus' name. And that's, you know, what we're all called to do and be that good Samaritan and help, you know, and you don't have to go internationally to help. There's places right here in your own community um, where you can start out and helping. So true. What about professional training? Um, You're an RN. um, Mm -hmm. Then there has to be some things as far as you say how to come up and adapt and make that unfamiliar area more familiar as a triage and, yeah, setting something like that up. Right. Uh, so there, there are a lot of different, for, for healthcare professionals, there's a lot of different trainings that you can do, tropical medicine training, uh, different locations, um, you know, just, but really a lot of it just comes through experience. You can have all the, all the training in the world, but that, that experience and that flexibility, having that flexibility, I can't stress enough how much that is important when you're working in a, you know, a disaster zone and you never know plans change every minute, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm sure some people are going to want to do that. Um, Samaritan's Purse, go to the website. I'm sure they've got um, ways to volunteer, ways to get involved, ways to donate, um, because uh, we want to be able to make sure that these efforts are all Mm well-funded. And same with Pregnancy Choices. Go to uh, pregnancychoicesforme.org. I believe that's right. Um, And uh, take a look at, uh, unless it's .com, try both. I think okay. either one, would, they'll try, flip back and forth. Okay, so. try both of those. Um, but Judith Hoover, thank you so much for what you do. God bless you, and thank you for joining us in our community. Thank you for having me, Susie. It's been wonderful talking with you.